victims of the transatlantic slave trade and their descendants have shaped Brazil's economy, politics, spirituality, art, culture, and sports. An African soul permeates the very essence of contemporary Brazil. Back in the 16th century, one of the most appalling tragedies in humanity took place, the transatlantic slave trade. Not only because of its abhorrent barbarism, but also in terms of its magnitude, organized nature, and mainly the negation of the heart of its victims. Millions of men, women, and children lost their lives and endured immense suffering during the voyage across the Atlantic and upon their arrival in the Caribbean and the Americas. Ao todo, cerca de 10 milhões de pessoas foram raptadas da África durante toda a escravidão colonial. Professor Elio Santos is president of the Foundation for Racial Equality. 40% dessas pessoas vieram para o Brasil. That's more than 4 million slaves. When they arrived in Salvador de Bahia, they were led to Pelourinho Square. Pelourinho é o lugar onde as pessoas eram vendidas e também eram torturadas. Merchants and plantation owners placed bets at public auctions. Helpless slaves were awarded to the highest bidder. Many were bought to work under extreme conditions on sugar plantations, a commodity that changed international trade during colonialism and boosted Brazil's economy. Brazil was the last country in the Americas to abolish slavery in 1888. But for Afro-Brazilians, the struggle is far from over. E aí, como diz assim, 20 anos para cá, né? Aí veio a fazer é, uma dizendo que herdeira, né? Que era filha de de Rio Ronaldo, né? Neta de Casuza, tirando querendo para a gente sair daqui. A plot of land that 34-year-old Sandra de Santos's ancestors worked and lived on for generations. Now called the Quilombo of Danda, runaway slaves banded together here, fleeing oppression and violence. Once free, they call themselves Quilombolas, a term for people of African origin. For Sandra, conflict never ceased. Vinha tratou para derrubar, né? Aqui veio muita questão de conflito. Quando a gente plantava, que chegava lá no outro dia, havia tudo destruído. Recalling the hardship her ancestors endured during slavery, Sandra knew she had to fight back, or she and her community would lose everything. E aí foi no momento que eu parti, né? É, me se tornei uma líder. Chega em sofrimento, abaixa meus bisavôs, meus avós, agora meus pais. Eu não vou querer isso, né? Futuramente. In 2003, Sandra heard about a new law introduced by the government that could help save Danda. She turned to INCRA, Brazil's National Institute for Colonization and Agrarian Reform, to find out more. Richard Turciano is director of planning and land structure at INCRA. Um ato do governo que aponta a possibilidade efetiva de resgatar esses territórios e devolver essas terras a essas comunidades quilombolas, né? e a garantir e fazer efetivamente a justiça aqueles que historicamente foram injustiçados e excluídos é, na história do país. But even with the new law, for years, nothing happened. Then, in 2009, there was renewed hope when former President Lula made a bold step. O atual presidente Lula, aqui nesse estado, na Bahia, na Praça Castro Alves, assina 30 decretos que declara de interesse social os primeiros 30 territórios quilombolas para que a gente tenha é, condições de desapropriar e devolver essas terras a essas comunidades. Some 200 descendants of slaves live in Danda today. While they wait for a solution to their dispute, they continue to work the land maintain their culture and age-old traditions, passed down by their ancestors. To acknowledge their contribution to human history and to promote and protect their human rights, 
The United Nations has set aside an international decade for people of African descent, which began in January 2015. The decade bears the theme of recognition, justice and development. According to the UN High Commission of Human Rights, Mr. Zaid Raad Al Hussein, it is hoped that this decade will bring an end to discrimination against people of African descent. The wheels of justice are turning slowly. Gaining land title is an extremely lengthy process and only few Quilombolas have succeeded in getting their rights to their land. But for Sandra and her community, success may be near. O título totalmente a gente tá, né, na mão, mas tá na final na finalização do do a gente a titulação. Agora nós estamos aguardando um prazo, que é um prazo do poder judiciário para poder conceder os títulos a essa essa comunidade. This report was produced by Mary Ferreira and Olivia Jonas for the United Nations.